the channel, we fall into Jack's Classic Superstar Series 26 with Dr. Death Steve Williams, the LJN Matt Hardy, and the Shockmaster. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Jax Classic Superstars Deep Dive and Review, a Tuesday tradition here on the channel for over three years running. And today on the channel, we've got Dr. Death Steve Williams, we got the Shockmaster, and we got the LJN Matt Hardy. But for all your modern wrestling figure needs, make sure you're hitting up Ringside Collectibles. Use discount code Kyle, save yourself 10%. And of course, we're going to do this unboxing and review like we do all the other ones here on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. We're going to start off with the LJN edition of Matt Hardy. Of course, we did get Jeff Hardy in the set beforehand, and that was an interesting one to say the least, and we'll see how this Matt Hardy does compare here. does make sense to get both Hardy Boys in this set, though, and I like that they did it at least in the next series. You guys know me. I always prefer my tag teams in the same series. Not really possible with this LJN influenced line, though, with only one per set. But we do got Matt Hardy right there, looking only like a Matt Hardy could look if he was in the LJN Classic Superstars line in Series 26. How about that? But it is Matt Hardy on the side. Matt Hardy, no LJN Superstars, nothing like that on the side there. Matt Hardy on the side with his name. And then the back of the package, you got the tail of the tape, you got the blurb, you got the glamour shot, you got the huge cross sell, the biggest series we ever had in the Classic Superstars. UPCs and warnings. Let's look at the back. Let's see what's going on. See what all the fuss is about. How about back here? Matt Hardy, 236 pounds, six foot two, finishing move, the old twist of fate. Titles, ECW champion, United States champion, world tag team champion, WWE tag team champion, cruiserweight champion, hardcore champion, and European champion. So how about all that? Quite the uh, legacy there for the old Matt Hardy, just like his brother Jeff. And I do have this already out of the box, as I do have a loose version. And this is, of course, a classic Superstars LJN interpretation. We've seen these the last few sets. Uh, it was just a moment in time thing. And as I've always said on the channel... Not a huge fan. I wish this was just a one-off set by itself, not included here, as I do feel it took away some spots of some key characters maybe we could have got, uh, but it is what it is after all this time. But it is Matt Hardy. Goes well with the Jeff Hardy, of course. A little bit anime influence, not as bad as the Trish Stratus and Jeff Hardy, but it has a touch of that, I would say. And we do know those two were earmarked for a different line that was canceled and moved into here. Uh, but this mat does feel like it belongs with the Jeff Hardy. That You can display those together without any issues, that's for sure. He's throwing up the old version one hand up there. Got the taped wrist going on all the way down to the taped forearms. Got black elbow pads. Got the baggy jeans, of course. And then he does have the cut-up shirt in purple there, looking like Matt Hardy. Long black hair as well. Uh, definitely it's Matt Hardy all day long. A hair sticky, not as bad as some of the others, but we got a little bit of stickiness to this one. That old Jack sticky disease Rears its ugly head once again. Does got a white belt as well. But kind of plain Jane, kind of is what it is. That's just kind of the way it goes here with these figures. But there's the old Matt Hardy in Series 26 as we work our way through all these lines here. Now we're going to turn our attention over to a guy that uh, has had an interesting career, to say the least. And that is the old Shockmaster himself, of course, uh, at one time known as Tugboat, at one time known as Typhoon, at one time known as Fred Ottman, at one time known as Dusty Rhodes' brother-in-law. He's had a lot of different gimmicks over the years. Uh, and uh, Shockmaster, probably the one he would like to forget because it's always brought up. He did fall through the door or whatever. I guess it wasn't a door, it was a wall he had to break through, he tripped, helmet went off flying, and uh, next thing you know, he's just talked about the rest of his career about that, and that's probably, he's probably, probably pretty sick about talking about it at the uh, autograph tables, but at the end of the day, as long as the money's green, I guess he probably will talk about that all you want, and of course, we did get a San Diego Comic-Con Mattel Elite version of this many years later, very cool, displayed in the package, falling down with a little hole in the back so you can see through. A very, very cool one. But you go back, way back, this was the first time the Shockmaster ever had an action figure, and this was so groundbreaking at the time. Not quite classic superstars when we think of uh, wrestlers of the Ric Flairs and things like that, but it's classic in its own way, so it did fit. It was a pretty cool outside-the-box figure for this line at the time, uh, and a very interesting one to, to boot, for sure. But there he is, the old Shockmaster, just looking like he's ready to take on the world is what he looks like right there. Shockmaster Sans helmet right there, looking like Typhoon. Oh, yeah, yep. Shockmaster on the side there. 
On the back of the package, we've got the big cross-sell UPCs, warnings, glamour shot, and no tail of the tape on this one, really. Uh, we'll talk about it, though, here in a second, but there it is on the back. Let's see what it says about our old friend Shockmaster, shocking the world one person at a time, like a young Ace Freely. He should have came out with uh, Shock Me as his en entrance theme. Uh, weight 384 pounds, six foot three, and that's all we get. I did talk about this set being the biggest set in Classic Superstars history, just a gigantic set. You got Giant Machine, you got the Sheik, you got the Iron Sheik, you got Junkyard Dog, Ming, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, Matt Hardy, Dangerous, oh, Dangerous, Danny Davis, the Shockmaster, Bret Hart, and Mr. Fuji. Quite the lineup right here in this set for sure. Shockmaster on the back showing no helmet and showing no robe. So very interesting there, too. They didn't show that on the back of the package. Kind of strange, if you ask me. But let's get the old Shockmaster. Let's make sure this doesn't shock me. You never know what might happen. Uh-oh. You might get a rookie unboxing, too. Rookie. Rookie. See you later. Oop, off the ceiling. That's the way it goes. Pull him out. Oh, he fell. He fell out and he lost his helmet. Is that kind of fitting? Is this kind of fitting for this unboxing? Uh, that's kind of funny. He just kind of didn't slide out right. See you later. See you later. No plastic prison shot, but it is, like I said, fitting here for the old Shockmaster. Uh, we do get this <laughs> Stormtrooper type helmet. It's what it's kind of supposed to look like. Obviously, you can't put a Stormtrooper helmet in here because of licensing issues and stuff like that. So similar but different enough to be dangerous. I guess that's where we'll kind of leave it with this one here. But very, very interesting looking helmet for him. Uh, all in a gray kind of spray paint, just like they did with the Stormtrooper trooper helmet then you do get the nice vest here and once again they must have had a run on this material uh, it's kind of funny because uh, the the material feels the exact same as last series we had the big show in that big outfit same type of material we also had the boss man in this kind of material as well they must have had a good deal going on it goes back like 10 years ago when i worked for nabisco we uh, did oreos of course and we had quite the run on banana all of a sudden we had a uh, banana we had banana double stuff Oreos. We had regular banana Oreos. We had banana Teddy Grahams. We had banana Cakesters, which were like a soft Oreo. Uh, and then we had what else? It was like a banana Fig Newton or something like that. But there was a bunch of items all came out at once. I said, first off, is this the year of the banana? Did nobody tell me? Secondly, did we buy a banana factory or did we get a heck of a deal on some bananas? What the heck? Does, does that many people like bananas that we got all these items coming out? Uh, I think nowadays, none of those items are even in existence anymore. So the year of bananas about 10 years ago really wasn't the year of bananas. So I don't know what the story was with that, but it was uh, everything was coming up bananas that year. It was a bananas year is what it was. But anyways, let's get down to the Shockmaster here. One thing that's always annoyed me with this figure is uh, the blue jeans. They're like painted on blue jeans. It looks so strange here with like the painted on belt buckle and stuff. I would have been better if they just left that out. It looks like my daughter upstairs. Actually, she could do a better job. Both of my kids are amazing artists. I don't know, how, I don't know where they get that from. I can barely spell my name. Uh, but they, it looks like they just painted it. It doesn't look like they did. They got a pen and just kind of said, okay, here's the belt, here's that. Just absolutely god-awful. Probably one of the worst things as far as details in the Jack's Classic line. Uh, just really, really bad there. Gold boots going on. The vest is good. The vest robe, whatever we're going to call it. Uh, it does look good. The head sculpt looks good. It looks like Fred Ottman. It looks like Tugboat. It looks like Typhoon. And I think we all agree we probably would have rather had a tugboat figure in the Classic Superstars line. I'm kind of shocked now that I think about it. We get a Typhoon, but we, and we get this one, but we never got tugboat. I don't know if his contract expired or what the exactly happened there. Uh, but I am happy to report there is no staining that I see, so that's nice to see no staining on the figure. I, I'm a fan of that. Big head on him, of course. Big Yokozuna-style body, and with that, you get those hands. Unfortunately, you got the wrist tape here, and it isn't painted, so it looks like just kind of flabby skin, like he's got some kind of weird elephantitis of the skin or something like he's the elephant man i don't know uh but very interesting looking figure of course hopefully this helmet fits on him and what do you know it does i think if you display this you gotta use the helmet on it or you display him falling down with the helmet rolling uh depending how you want to display your Shockmaster figure i guess but an interesting one one i do appreciate because you guys know i do love a deep cut character i think they could have just gave this one just a little bit more love uh, and made it just a little bit better but one guy that needs all the love is the man, the myth, the legend, the Dr. Death. Dr. Death, one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. That whole brawl for all thing really just kind of put a cloud over him. That's all anybody talks about. But man, you go back to the days of Mid-South, WCW, even a little ECW. 
Dr. Death was all the rage, and I really came to appreciate Dr. Death in the 90s uh, with some of his All Japan Pro Wrestling. I was a huge All Japan guy, trading tapes with a guy, uh, giving him American stuff. He was giving me Japanese stuff, and we were sending VHS tapes across the world is what we were doing. That's what we did back in the day. But it's Dr. Death and the Backdrop Driver, one of the most lethal finishing moves of all time. If I had to list my top five finishing moves, I think the Backdrop Driver would be number one. Dr. Death just killing people, just absolutely murdering people with that move. I recommend all you guys go over to YouTube, check out Dr. Death, check out some of his All Japan stuff specifically. Just absolutely awesome. Just absolutely really cool. And Dr. Death, I got to meet very briefly when he was inducted into the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in Waterloo, Iowa. I believe he was battling cancer at the time, but was still a bad bad dude, uh, one I wouldn't want to mess with. And it's just a shame that whole brawl for all and how that all went down and really changed the, the changed his career for sure. That's for sure. But this Dr. Death, and it's like Jackson, the tale of two Dr. Deaths. This one pretty popular. This one pretty rare. Doesn't come up a whole lot. Where then you go back to the Bone Cruncher days where it was one of the most the biggest peg warmers of all time. I'd put that one, maybe the Jacqueline up there. Uh, just two that were just forever haunting retail stores, like a young Rio. They promised never to change, never to leave. And I think if you go way out in the country uh, to a, a mom and pop store or a Ben Franklin's or something, you might be able to still find that Dr. Death if you're lucky. Uh, but this Dr. Death, all day long, one of my favorite figures. Love the big robe on this one. This is Dr. Death to me, not so much that bone cruncher. But there he is in the package, beautiful robe. Dr. Death doing Dr. Death things on the side of the package. Steve Williams right there. Don't call him Steve Austin. It's Steve Williams. We all know Stone Cold's real name is Steve Williams. Big cross sell down below. We talked about UPC's warnings, tail of the tape, got the glamour shot. Let's see what it says about old Dr. Death, Steve Williams. 280 pounds, six foot two, finishing move. The Backdrop Driver, sign me up all day long. Titles, NWA Tag Team Champion, NWA United States Tag Team Champion. Of course, the Miracle Violence Connection with Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Uh, matches with the Steiners for a little bit in WCW. Oh, so much good Dr. Death stuff. I really do miss me some Dr. Death. And of course, you know I'm going to have a loose version of that one. Got him here in his like rocky robe. Man, there's something special. Dr. Death, when I first saw him, I remember we had a, like a big black robe kind of covering his eyes, coming out that long hair all wet. Man, just a guy you don't want to mess with for sure. And that's what I miss for wrestling. Hard hitting. This guy's like this. Just something special about old Dr. Death. And have I uh, loved on Dr. Death enough? Should I just marry the guy? Should I kiss him? Should I kiss him? No, no, I won't. I won't do it. But Dr. Death looking good. You got the Dr. Death logo on the boots. Love that. You got the flames going on on the boots as well. White and red. Of course, he did go to Oklahoma. We all know that. So he's got the Oklahoma colors going all day long. I know this is Dr. Death. Another absolutely fabulous head sculpt in the Jax Classics side. Just beautiful. Just beautiful figure all around. There is no complaints I have out of this. This is one of my all-time Jax favorite figures from the Classic Superstars. And heck, Jax in general. Absolutely do love this Dr. Death figure. Doesn't get much better than that. Would love a modern take on Dr. Death. Give me a really good Dr. Death in the Mattel line or maybe Power Town or one of these other lines will step up and do it. But more Dr. Death, the better if you ask me. So an interesting one here. A Matt Hardy that doesn't do a whole lot for me. A Shockmaster one that's a really cool idea. Didn't really translate as well as probably we'd hoped it would. And then an absolute all-timer here in Dr. Death. So quite the varied lineup in Classic Superstar Series 26 in this video. We'll be unboxing the rest of 26 on the channel as well, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But what are your guys' thoughts on these three? Did you pick them up back in the day? Are you going to pick them up now? Any thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. Check out the Patreon for much earlier access to videos like these and every other video on the channel. Bonus videos, exclusive videos, Q&As, you name it. A lot going on over at the Patreon. And best of all, you do support the channel. You can also support the channel over there at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And then don't forget about social media. Sir Paul 64 on Twitter. Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for Jack's Class Superstar Series 26... I am Kyle, and I will see you guys all real soon.